Welcome to another episode of No Ordinary Woman, where we recognize and celebrate women of all ages and all stages. I'm Fiona Briffer, and today I've got Leah Selfie joining me. Hi, Leah. Hi, how are you going? Uh, really well, and I love your name, Leah Selfie. That is a really cool name. Did you invent the selfie? I wish I had. I wish I had. <laughs> Leah Selfie, though, it's Leah Selfie. <laughs> It's in not, hindsight, it would have made me a lot of money, but you know, that's all right. It's in the past. It's not Leah Selfie, it's Leah Self. And <laughs> oh, good. Leah's here to share her story um, about a, a very life changing moment when COVID hit. Now, you may remember when that happened. <laughs> Isn't that a bombshell? <laughs> still in it, yeah. It, uh, it feels like 10 years ago, but it really was only last year. Um, and you were made redundant from your job, and it just made you rethink everything so I'm just gonna can you just what were the biggest realizations you had to face when you when you first lost your job um I think the biggest thing that I had to kind of come to terms with was that um all the, all the dreams and all the plans that I'd had you know the five-year ten-year plan of I'm gonna work this and do that and save for this like all of that stopped um, you know, I was very realistic. I was working in the hotel and the events industry before COVID hit. So I knew pretty quickly that it wasn't going to kind of eventuate once yeah. things started to kind of settle down. Um, so I really was kind of like, if it were all these plans and things that I looked forward to in the next five to 10 years, like I had, I had to stop. I had to think about how I was going to make that happen. And I didn't know how I was going to do that. Yep. And that and we didn't know how long it was going to last and what the results were, but by by all accounts, it did seem like the end of the world at the beginning of last year, didn't it? Yes, yes, it did. <laughs> and when this all comes crumbling down around your ears, you're a single mum yes. to your beautiful little boy Charlie. Um, what goes through your head when you are the the supporter and the mm -hmm. sole breadwinner in the family? What went through your head? Um pretty much every swear word under the yeah. sun um, on a constant roller coaster. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, I had kind of gotten to a point where I wasn't necessarily living week to week, but, you know, I still had to make the budget work and, yeah. you know, there was a bit of a savings there and, and that kind of thing, but it really was fight or flight. Yeah. Um, I went into mass anxiety mode. I was having panic attacks, um, you know, anywhere from two or three times a day. Sometimes yeah. I couldn't even get out of bed. Um, the thought of not knowing when the next paycheck was coming in was really scary. Yes, I was on JobKeeper, but I also knew that that was going to end at some point. Yeah. And that also wasn't enough to kind of sustain the lifestyle that we had. I mean, we're not, you know, yeah. living totally abundantly, but, you know, it was really hard for me to kind of sit down and logically think about how to make it work when I didn't know once JobKeeper ended, what my next option was at well, that point. That's a thing. Like the all the uncertainty make it very mm. hard to plan. And if you are living, like you said, a lifestyle according to your means was you had a full time income and you were yes. doing well, and then suddenly, <laughs> yeah. like JobKeeper kind of doesn't cover um, no <laughs> the the full time you know successful income. Um, so. Obviously, you have to you had to deal with all of that anxiety, and it's very hard to make decisions and plan and process yes. when you are going through that a fight or flight, and it's like flight pretty much. Where it's like, yeah, how do I get the hell out of this? Um, so yeah. once you had a chance to process that and just let it, you know, obviously that took some time. Mm -hmm. Then you kick into right. I've got yes. this. You kick into mum. Got to get my stuff mm -hmm. together mode. Yeah. What did you start? discovering about yourself um so there was that moment of despair and anxiety and watching all the Netflix and eating all the chocolate that I did yeah. um and then I did I just went into right this this can't continue one because mentally I can't deal with this every day it's yeah. too hard yeah. and two I need to prove to myself that I can get through this and it was at that point where that was the biggest thing I'd really kind of had to face in my life yeah. so I knew if I could overcome it mm. then what else was really going to stop me? Um, don't worry, I'm sure there'll be something in the future that we'll try, but at the time that was what I had to deal with. Yeah. Um, and I just decided, right, I needed to look at 
every job that I'd ever done, every position that I'd been in within those companies, all the skills that I had acquired, everything that I'd ever um, self-taught or been provided training with and go, okay, how can I use any of that in a new industry? Yeah. Because my, my biggest problem was is that not only had I come from the hotel and events industry, but prior to that, I'd spent nearly eight years in the travel industry. Oh. So that was also, <laughs> yeah, that was also another industry that wasn't really going to be oh. lining up the red carpet to welcome me back either. So yeah. it really was taking a really deep dive into okay, what skills, what am I good at? What do I love? What do I enjoy? And how can I now make that work? Um, but I also knew that me going, that going back into the workforce and trying to find a full-time job with those skills was going to be really hard. Mm. So I knew going down the traditional route of, you know, becoming a job seeker or just applying for things online, it just yeah. wasn't going to work. So yeah. I, I decided that starting my own business was actually going to be the only way. And it was, it wasn't a do or die situation, but it was like, okay, I have to make this work yeah. because this is, this is all I've got. And I have to give it everything I've got. Myself. Yeah. And how hard is it to back yourself when you're already going through all the anxiety <laughs> and, and uncertainty that is going on in the world, let alone yeah. starting your new, you know, your, your new future. So going through the one of the things you discovered about yourself was you had been doing stuff for other people all your life, which isn't uncommon. And sometimes yeah. we get to that point and go, hang on a minute. You got to that point, we went, what does Leah like? What does mm -hmm. Leah want to do? What is Leah passionate about? And, and it was an opportunity for you mm -hmm. to take a step back and then be a bit um reflective of what what might the future look like if I made my dreams come true right yeah and it, it really was that point of um like nobody have it had ever actually asked me what do I want to do yeah you know I'd always been hired by someone and told okay this is what you have to do this is what you have to look like this is what you have to say this is how you need to interact with people um and you know in the various companies that I've worked with over the last 15 years I just went, okay, well, that's what you need from me in order to fulfill my job. Yeah. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, you know, and it, and it started from way back. You know, I was a young mom. I was pregnant at 21. So I was, I didn't even get a chance to really find out who I was as a young lady. And then yeah. I became a young mom yeah. and then very quickly a young single mom. Yeah. <laughs> so I had to start looking at what my career needed to be like in order to provide for my son. So yeah. it was, I became a chameleon. Yeah. I went and worked at a company and I adapted to what they needed me to be. And then when it was time for me to move on, I adapted to the next one. So I, yeah, it wasn't until COVID that I actually asked myself, well, what do I want to do? What are my dreams? Yeah. And they're dreams that aren't dictated by somebody else's pay, pay, pay yeah. packet or, you know, somebody else's timeline for my career. And it was, it was hard I never actually had to think about it so yeah and that can be just as confronting as um the initial onset of this as well yeah. and the thing is that like so many people lose their identity throughout the course of life and mm. I think because we're still playing by the rules of the previous generations of your, your job is a means to an end you just you yeah. should just be grateful to have a job you get up mm -hmm. you have kids you have uh, you go to work and you play to those rules that they've been mm. playing to. And I think more and more these days we're starting to wake up and go, actually, <laughs> I can play to my own rules and do yeah. what I was created to do with my passions, yeah. my my skills and all of those mm. things that make me a completely unique human being. And that's that's my passion for coaching coming through <laughs> here. But it's about discovering um, this unique a uh, unique identity that you have that got lost through and and it happens to most mothers I'm not going to lie yeah. mothers lose their identity in their kids but mm -hmm. we can also lose our identity in our jobs and in being what our parents uh, expect us to be or our yeah. surroundings or our jobs expect us to be and what can happen with a single mum and I've been there in that position too is you take the job as a means to an end mm -hmm. and it's kind of like I'll take this temporarily until I you know and the yeah. next minute, it's 15 years later and you are still yeah. playing by everybody else's rules. So what was the biggest thing that you learn about yourself that you just, that made you think, wow, when you were going through this process? I need to be more selfish. That was probably the biggest thing. Um, 
and you don't get to do that as a mum, not not even just as a single mum, just as you know a partner mum, whatever. Um, you don't get to be selfish. You don't get to put yourself first, ask you know what you want. Um, and I think that was the biggest thing for me. I'd struggled for a while to be selfish after it all happened mm. because I was still like, what does he need? What do, like, what do we need? How do we pay the, like, how do I pay the bills? How do I do this? Like, it was always still like figuring out how to make it work to fix somebody else's problem or yeah. fix something else that we needed. Um, but it wasn't, you know, okay, well, this is really stressful. When am I going to take a day off or an afternoon off just to sit by the beach or read a book or have a nap? Like, you know, I wasn't selfish and yeah it led to burnout very quickly, yeah. it, you know, because I still wasn't actually taking into consideration what I needed and what I wanted. And it wasn't until I started asking myself those questions yeah. that I was able to do that. And I've never had to, you know, like I said, I was a young lady to a young mom to a, trying to build a career, yeah. um, you know, and I've always been um, career focused. Yeah. Um, I've always put my work first. Yeah especially when I was in the travel industry, I would get up and I'd be at work at seven o'clock in the morning and I wouldn't come home until seven or eight o'clock at night. And that's, oh, wow. yeah. you know, that's what I did. And yeah. so there was that hard transition period of becoming a mum and then trying to make that work with being so career focused. And so my identity was always yeah. so confused and I never had a chance to think about what yeah. I wanted and be selfish. And so that was probably my biggest thing. Yeah, like you said, being a chameleon, like all of your mm. energy was being consumed by changing the colours to suit your environment and, and being that person. And it really does take, it literally takes rewiring of the mm -hmm. brain to allow ourselves. And I know that women are very much nurturing servers, um, but you, we do get consumed in the roles that we have rather than who we are and we get lost yeah. in our roles. And so you need to rewire. And the word selfish, we think like we've, we've got to learn to be selfish, but it's actually not being selfish. It's, no. it's an essential self-care and self-love need. Yeah. And it's a way to find what does, you know, when you said, what does Leah want? What does Leah mm. love? And this is the thing, like if you're watching at home, this is the thing we need to stop uh, not just once, but frequently because mm -hmm. we get busy and we forget about it, is what fills our cup. Because yeah. when you fill your cup with that selfishness, isn't selfish, it is mm -hmm. self-love and self-care that you are able to keep pouring out yeah. to everyone around you. And being your best self requires all of that self-nurturing first, mm. but you can be your best self to show up as your best self for others. Yeah. And then that kind of becomes a self-feeding um, filling, okay. doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. And so I'd heard this concept for so many years about like filling, you know, fill your cup first before you help others and, you know, self-care and all that kind of stuff. And it was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, when I've got time to do that, I would do it. I'm too busy helping this person. I'm too busy being a mom. I'm too, like, it was never a priority. Yeah. And it's only been since this whole journey of through COVID and starting my own business that I've realized how little I actually loved myself and that was actually really daunting and quite confronting to admit like I don't love where I am in my life or the journey that I've had so far or where I think I'm going to be or what I look like or you know I didn't love any of those things about me but because I'd never actually taken the time like over the however many years that I've been here um to actually work on those little things I was like I've got a lot of work to do yeah. like, this That's isn't personal just one afternoon first. you know check it you know check the box and I'll be fine like it's that's been a whole different self-care journey in it, you know, and I haven't even, I think, scratched the surface. Yeah, the, the the personal development journey is a lifelong journey as well. And it's not set and forget. And this is one thing no. that I um, go through with my clients. It's not set and forget. It's something you've got to constantly go back and revisit and remind mm. yourself of those things. And I think being aware of where it comes from as well, so that that tradition, you know, that, that um, generational um self-deprecation even I guess yeah. um, and also you don't like that false humility you don't big note yourself you don't and yeah. we forget what our amazing um attributes are mm -hmm. and we dim our light to not be we don't want to be so big we don't want to exactly. be that person 
And I say, I say to every woman out there watching, <laughs> let your light shine, girl. Yeah, and just let it go. Power, let your light shine because other people need it to see. Other yeah. people need you to be your best, biggest, most mm. beautiful self. And that all comes from within and yeah. a knowing of all of your amazing attributes. And we've all got, you know, strengths and weaknesses because every strength comes with a weakness is embracing yeah. everything and loving everything about ourselves. And like you said, if you haven't looked at and done those self-loving exercises, mm -hmm. and if you haven't done it at home watching, write a list of all the things you love about yourself and read yeah. it often. Yeah. Yeah. And it's even little things like, you know, I love the way I, I love the way that my, the water feels on my feet when I walk along the beach. You know, I love the fact that I love my hair color now as a yeah. you know, natural redhead. I love the color of my eyes. I love the smile I put on yeah. when I'm in photos. Like it was just, I, I needed to, I worked on the stuff that I knew I loved about myself first yeah. and then I've slowly been able to now love other parts of my body yeah. and other parts of myself yeah, um, cool. that I didn't like before yeah. because it was too hard to accept or admit that I needed to change some things. Yeah. So it was just easier. Just I didn't like it. I don't love it. It's too hard. Yeah. So it's, it's starting off with lots of little message. things. That is such a beautiful message is, is start to look at the, the which we call low hanging fruit. Look at the stuff that yeah. you believe in. Yeah. But that pretty woman, um, the, the bad stuff is easier to believe. Then we need yeah. to retrain our brains and rewire Correct. our brains and embrace every single bit about mm -hmm. ourselves and, and embrace the bits that we maybe criticize and don't look at them yeah. and it's like, and look at your arms and legs, you know. I mean, I'm getting old and things are sagging, but I'm like, you know <laughs> what, legs, thank you for getting me up today. And then saggy <laughs> tummy for carrying my children around. And yeah. You know, all of those things and embrace everything about yourself is beautiful and, and worthy of your so own true. love. And I think it's so important to make that a part of your journey, whether you, um, you know, run your own business or you work for some, you know, you're an employee. Like, I think it, at some point you still need to stop, ask yourself what you want, start learning to love yourself and start filling that cup because even if you are an employee, you can't give your best at your job if you're not giving the best to yourself. Yeah, your best as a mum, your best as an employee, Correct. your best as a daughter, your best as a friend needs to come from yeah. yourself, your best. And just totally through true. this identity journey, I just want to ask you whether you think that we have trouble we have trouble looking at all the good stuff because it means we have to look at the stuff that we don't want to look at as well. And it's that accountability. If I open up this can of worms, mm. I have to look at all the other stuff too. Do you think yeah. that might be a reason for not wanting to dive into identity? And Definitely. I think, like I know throughout my journey, um, I know when I was growing up, I was like, you know, by this age, I want to have a house. And by this age, I want to be married. And this age, I have kids. And, and you identify with what that particular lifestyle is like. And then, you know, things happen along the way. And, you know, plans are always plans. But let's be honest, they never go as, as you want them to. And then it wasn't until I got to this point and I realized I had to start looking a little bit closer at myself yeah. that I was then picking on myself and not doing the things as per the timeline that I thought I was going to live. Yeah, yeah. Well, you didn't have a house by this stage because you had a baby so, so early mm -hmm. and you didn't get married because it didn't work out because you weren't financially stable. And that was a stressor. Like, so I, I just kept finding all these things to pick on because yeah. I wasn't identifying with that person or that timeline that I thought I was going to have. Yeah. And, you know, and so it can be hard because you open up a can of worms and then it's just like this horrible story that yes. just keeps there's, going there's a lot of going. it's like you've got to, if if you want to take your sugar you have to take your vinegar it's like okay well I don't want the vinegar so I'm just going to take the sugar as well but I think that this yeah. is one thing and and this is a thing that I love telling all women is to look at your past and mm. don't label it as good or bad but yeah. as all part of your journey some of it was helpful some of it was mm. unhelpful but it's all what made you who you are today and every Definitely. single one of us has got stuff that we would prefer never happened <laughs> but, but big whoop you know what you are exactly who you are because of that and the minute we stop um, beating ourselves up for that mm. the minute we can embrace the whole package and the yeah. good stuff and the lessons you know I've learned some amazing lessons through doing the wrong thing yeah <laughs> you know, we all? <laughs> I'm not gonna lie some of it was just fun well it wasn't helpful yeah. but it was fun but 
is being able to embrace all of that in a self-loving, self-compassionate and taking that ownership, I think Mm. is really powerful for moving forward and rocket launching forward into your future is the accountability, is taking accountability for all my actions, Mm -hmm. uh, helpful and unhelpful, because now that gives me power to take accountability from here yeah to be a little bit more intentional uh and mm-hmm. crafty and what you've discovered is through your your whole self-awareness thing and working out what an amazing uniquely gifted human being you are you've designed the life you want to live now yeah 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 and it's about I think realizing that I and control was a big thing for me I'm not so much a control freak but I you know, with my anxiety, having that control and less uncertainty just makes my life yeah. so much easier to yeah. deal with. So it was starting to come to a point where the stories and the negative stories I kept telling myself about what I hadn't done in the past, well, I can't control what I did back then. Yeah, yeah. Like you were saying, you kind of have to be accountable and go, okay, it happened. It was helpful. It was unhelpful. But that then gave me the power and the control to go, okay, well, the future hasn't happened yet. Mm. And I'm the one that's going to be in control of that. Yeah. I'm the one that's going to make that work because it's my responsibility. I have to accept what I've done and I have to accept that it's a part of my past, but it will not affect what happens in my future. Yes. That's it doesn't now. define you. Correct. It doesn't define you. It's not who you are. It's just something you've done. Yes. So that's why our identity is not in what we do. It's yes. just, that's just what we do. Our identity Correct. is who we are uh that this is a really great story and I think it's something that we have all faced at one stage or another and and I really just hope that hearing you being so open and honest and beautiful about it has inspired somebody who's watching to 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 just embrace themselves and love themselves and and love yourself as you are right where you are before you take the next steps on to what's next for me yeah I'm going to be bigger and better and more wonderful in the future Mm -hmm. But I need to love me right here, right now first before yeah. I can do that, right? No, that's I totally agree with you. And thank you so much. I think it's you, know, you can't move past where you are now until you accept who you are now. You may not you you may not be one hundred percent happy with where you are right now, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. But in order to feel like you can actually move forward and make a difference in your own life then you need to be like, okay, well, where I am now is where I need to be and I'm okay with that. Yep. That's all that I need to be okay with. That's yes. it. <laughs> and that self-love and self-compassion and self-embracing right here, right now is what's going to get you yeah. to the next stage. You, it's yeah. not like it's not something uh, in the future. Your, no. your success and your happiness and your self-love isn't in the future. It's right here, right now. Correct. And that's what leads to your future. Oh, yeah, so that's- true oh look Leah thank you so much for coming on and just being so beautiful and open about your story and sharing that with with me and with everybody watching and I am sure everybody uh joins me in wishing you every success in your business I'm going to leave a link to Leah's business if you want to learn more about Leah I'm going to leave a link to her website in the description of this video because let's all help each other succeed (laughs) (laughs) pleasure getting to know you Leah thank you so much no thank you so much Fiona it's been amazing yeah my pleasure and thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you for another episode of no ordinary woman next time bye for now bye